quoted very clearly that you are going to live better compared to your peers but why go to that extent one thing which i have always learned is if you do something which will impact the person's life that person is your fan life now thank you manan for joining us today on let's talk business series by reality and xt thank you so much for having me here so manan before we begin with your journey in real estate let's start uh, going back to your early days maybe during your childhood you must be uh, even accompanying your father when he did the project visits right so during those visit did it give you any kind of clarity when it came to your career path so my grandfather started the business into construction yeah and this is during 1964 so he was into civil contracting at that time where they used to do uh, smaller buildings offices houses and uh, then my dad joined the business i think in around 1989 or 1990 uh, when i got young uh, during my schooling days he used to take me around he used to show me a lot of sites so we were basically into only epc contracting mm. and he always used to show me that this building is constructed by us this hotel is done by us mm. this road is constructed by us and always i used to see one thing uh, common where i used to always ask him that where is man infra logo Yeah. So he answered me and he explained it to me the difference between a developer and a contractor that we are building it mm. for somebody and handing it over. He is going to sell it, gain publicity out of it, and that's his part of the business. Our work is just doing the back end, constructing it and handing it over to the client. Mm. And over the years, I started seeing that more and more. One day, uh, he took me to one of this Juhu properties. So if you might have heard of Novotel Hotel, Hotel yeah. at Juhu. which was early year holiday in mm. so we have constructed this hotel even the club at juhu that's also done by us and he took me over there that this hotel is done by us so i mm. asked him that where is man infra logo again he is like you do not own this hotel right. so your logo but natural cannot be presented over there mm. so i asked him this question that you do all the hard work mm. you do the actual on site ground path breaking things right from engineering to physical labor to construction everything in in place and lot of times you don't even get credited for so i told him the day i'll grow old and i'll join the business i will only make building where i can put my logo nice that's when i understood hmm. that i wanted to become more of a developer hmm. and uh, during my college holidays i used to come to office hmm. so i started joining office and started understanding the business what we were doing so i remember my first thing which i learned in the company was preparing vouchers so i used to sit next to my dad's secretary there was no cabin space nothing during my college holidays and i used to just sit over there and observe that she used to write something on the papers continuously mm. and i asked her one day that what is this is this why are you making so many notes so she is like these are the claimed vouchers by the staff which they go for conveyances tea mm. coffee etc so i told her i want to learn these process first now the moment i started learning that i started indirectly getting the control of the finance department in my hand right that's when i started understanding the business mm. that where is the expenses going in the company mm. and how the things are getting planned mm. and uh, that time i even designed the first website of maninfra okay. so i started getting into and engaging into the project stage where i started meeting all of my site heads mm. project heads that how are you constructing what are you doing so right from the ports to uh, railway jobs to infrastructure uh, roads everything i met all the people started understanding the business hmm. and that's how my career journey started so it's quite interesting when you said you started during your college time only because i've seen and i have spoken to a lot of second and third generation developers where they say they have shadowed their father and they have actually gone to those sites and get their hands dirty So did you go to those field uh, project visits where you had to get involved to know what exact is the process when it comes to construction labor all the processes like that So I graduated in 2013 mm. that's when uh, and like I told you like I had conversed with my father that I would want to do my own construction mm. and I always wanted to add something to the family corporate culture right so what's something new that I can do Mm. we had just got listed in 2010 yeah so i told him that i want to get into real estate so by the time i finished my graduation mm. he had almost finalized certain plots and kept so few were into redevelopments few were into a complete outright buy 
so i started the real estate venture in 2013 actually mm. so what happened is my grandfather started civil construction mm. my father started the port infrastructure segment yeah. and i started real estate mm. that's how the journey began and when i started doing that of course uh, there was no sales team there was no marketing team there was no architecture team mm. because we were completely a b2b organization yeah. and there was a sudden transition which happened from a b2b to a b2c company right so f- building it from ground up mm. the first thing which i started doing was visiting the contracting sites for the other developers which we were already constructing so i started understanding how they construct how they sell mm. is there a requirement for sales office what is a show flat and back then 10 years back there was not much culture glorified called yeah. as experience centers there used to be small show flats inside the building mm. once the building had reached a certain height or a certain floor so i started going there and seeing these things and because we were working for more than 25 developers at that time as a contractor mm. i tried and understand each and every single person's strength and weaknesses both which i then amplified and put it on to my site mm. which is the real estate side of it now when i started doing that right from standing at the site yes to understand how the construction works more than that what was important is how the real estate journey would work yeah because yes i had more than 400 engineers to back me up as a part of the parent company but what's the innovation mm. in architecture because earlier the plans used to come in ready by the client and we used to construct exactly how we were told to mm. but now i had an open playground yeah that do something which you would be known for so from the very first project i used to sit at site and i remember during the first three projects i never used to introduce myself mm. as who i was so i used to be a site engineer also i used to be a sales person also mm. and every sunday i used to sit at site doing the sales for my own real estate project without even client getting to know because mm. i had understood one thing the moment they get to know that i am the promoter yeah i will not get the real world feedback true and because it was my first project mm. i wanted the real world feedback which will you know give me a chance to improvise on which will give me a chance to be and have my self identity mm. so i started doing that and i started getting feedback on what things are required to be how things can be further more better mm. and one thing which i always saw in these all developers is every client was paying a hefty amount but what they missed out is a lifestyle yeah you might be staying in western suburb central mm. suburb or south mumbai you were getting projects but everyone was staying in an average category development mm. and paying hefty premiums for it mm. that's what i wanted to differentiate myself from from the very first day and that's when we started creating the culture that doesn't matter which project it is mm. it needs to have some innovation bit as a part of it because otherwise micl will not be known as micl true and that's when aradhya was born so aradhya was the name which we had given to our very first project which mm-hmm. was an inspiration from my grandmother's name yeah so during her last days uh, she had become a monk so from mm-hmm. indira her name got converted to aradhya ji masati ji so dad said like you're starting your first project let us have the first uh, project name as aradhya towers Mm. and i told him i would want to create a legacy out of it why just name aradhya towers and why mm. finish the legacy over there because today when you go on google maps and if you just search the word aradhya yeah you will see the entire sequence right from the very first project till date what we are constructing and that is what is our strength so i would say you are the third generation entrepreneur because in 19, 1969 it was started by mr kishor shah your grandfather and then later mr parag shah uh continued the same line where he also got more success in ports infra projects but in 2013 as you quoted you joined the company and rather than you know continuing in the same success because MICL had already created that kind of benchmark i would say or the legacy where they would are known for the you know delivering quality projects they are known for the uh, company that needs to be associated with when you are having such bigger projects or bigger bigger lineups in construction but having that kind of already safe road map already paved for you 
what made you interested or i would ask what actually inspired you or made you look upon real estate sector because when you joined in 2013 right the real sector uh, real estate sector which we see now is mm. quite different when it was in early 2000 right lot of i would say um, black money a lot of wrong names were given to the real estate developers not looked upon in a good manner the way it is looked now so what made you interested to start with this vertical like i said when i was visiting the other projects mm. for few of the other developers and i started understanding their strengths and weaknesses there were a couple of things which always used to pop in front of me there was a lack of transparency in the industry yeah there was a lack of honesty in the industry and third thing there was lack of innovation in the industry so when i started seeing these things and a person is you know giving every single hard earned money of their life mm. which they have done in the form of savings and they break their fds they sell their gold they sell their shares or you know the lifetime money which they won mm. is ideal if you see the global math average yeah india is one of the only countries in the world which parks its lifetime savings into estates true the western civilization still believes in renting mm. or just on the emis yeah but indians have a sentimental bond towards home like when they say apna ghar mm. you know it's not just i'm buying an apartment i'm buying a house yeah there are dreams attached to it mm. there is emotion attached to it there is literally lifetime of memories which people cherish over there True. lot of times i have seen like people have always bought just one house and they have lived generations in that mm. right and what was happening in the industry is people were playing with them yeah in honest terms mm. that was a very insightful moment for me and like i said i wanted to do something of my own as well and adds uh, you know like new verticals in the company mm. that's when i realized that if i be honest if i be transparent and if i innovate mm. i would be successful in this industry so i started talking and being more open mm. i'll give you one of the examples when i was selling my first project aradatar yeah there used to be a garden land which was a reservation attached to it in a typical case scenario what would have other developers been doing is they would have told the customers because that time there was no rera yeah so you were free to do whatever you want to mm. no rera no gst you were in the service tax era yeah and i think fungible had just come in so what was happening is people would have told that this is part of your property you can use it as when as you want to mm. what did i do i told customers every person who was buying specifically up front that this garden is a reservation which can be used by three four other buildings also combined together mm. if you do not like this please don't buy a house here so you kept it transparent correct completely. three four customers went back mm. but they came back again with the same feedback that we appreciate your honesty and transparency mm. because you have told and guided us from day one earlier we thought that okay we'll have a lack of privacy but when we saw it the other way around mm. because you we were upfront informed yeah we actually saw it as a potential that it can save my maintenance True. because it will be shared with two three buildings mm. the garden can be maintained much better Mm. so that gave me an honest feedback and i saw an immediate success where the apartments started getting sold mm. secondly innovating the space back then 10 years back in a stand alone building people never got amenities there was barely yeah. culture of you know double light lobbies there was barely any culture of beautiful um, decorative compound walls mm. you used to have a stereotypical building where developer wanted to consume fsi yeah so fsi 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 we started with the philosophy first let's create a product mm. even if i am not been able to consume fsi it doesn't matter mm. because if i am creating a premium quality product mm. and under consuming the fsi i will still make the same amount of money because people would love to pay premium for a premium product so you are using today one of the best technology mobile phones or the tablets right mm. and you probably know that this particular piece of tablet is getting priced double the price of the other competitors but you're still paying for it because yeah. you're getting the service in return mm. you're getting that quality in return the same thing we did i introduced a gym 
I introduced beautiful, good-looking, double-eyed lobbies. Mm. Back then, ten years when people never used to speak about these things in a standalone building. Yeah. Again, immediately when I innovated these things, mm. the company started seeing the transactions happening, and in less than one year's time, we were ninety percent sold out. So you're making it sound very easy, but I'm sure when you would have entered in this market, and as you said, there were players like that who are not keeping it honest and transparent. What were the major challenges did you face during those times when you were like first hand? You are experiencing everything from, uh, you know, I would say scratch, like how to go about it, what projects to settle for, how to market, and everything during the time when. I think even the agencies were not there. Even if there were few, they were not that organized. So, how did you first of all? What major challenges did you face, and how did you overcome those challenges? The first challenge which came was when people started uh, talking to us. They came and met us. They met my father. Like you are doing a a building for the first time as a developer. How will you be successful? Mm. And why should people trust you as a developer? The first question came in, and we had a very simple answer. We are not constructing the building for the first time. Yeah. In fact, we are one of the contractors who has done majority buildings for the city, mm. naming from the very top high rises mm. to the elongated structures to complicated port structures. Mm. So making a building was actually a cakewalk. So we had to mm. explain it to people that when developers are relying on local contractors. Mm. which does not have timelines efficiency quality check controls yeah. we do have everything in house mm. the moment we have these things in house automatically we've got people trusting us so the first challenge people faced was why should we trust you which we encountered for by answering them that any which ways we are doing it for other people so i definitely have the strength of all the developers combined together mm. second challenge which came in was in terms of segmenting the product the area in which we started operating uh, which was ghatkopar east had a middle to higher middle income group segment yeah. which had two beds three bed residences and i always saw the people uh, the genre which majority occupies the space is gujaratis mm. and i always saw an obsession of this genre people with living rooms yeah they love larger than life living room because the culture of gujaratis is such where i see them interacting with family sitting in the living room yeah. they don't have a privacy corridor feature where you know they have families living separate mm. and the kids living separate they want everybody to be together yeah. while they eating food while the mothers cooking the the kids are sitting on the dining table the fathers watching probably news or cricket match for example mm. they want the space to be connected mm. we created residences which were off the market so we made four bed residences at that location and three bed residences mm. and for the two bed residences we created something as a super dining space now this dining space was the large foyer which was typically not available in that location yeah. which connects all the bedrooms mm. the kitchen and the living as well people started seeing that and appreciating it so the first challenge came in was what genre you should go into Mm. where the world is selling one bed two bed and three bed residences mm. we chose to do majority three and four bed residences and some portion of two beds mm. so that was another challenge which came up but we easily resolved it because i sit on every single plan mm. wall by wall and even till date every single selection right from the marbles to the tiles to in fact every single faucet in your bathroom is also hand picked by me so when i go into these kind of detailings mm. before that i see 50 30 projects yeah analyze the market mm. then come out with a synopsis and then we go forward so challenges were definitely there where people were not trying to trust us but mm. when they saw the construction progress mm. when they saw the quality and they saw the innovation we could overcome them easily but i feel that the company itself mycl was already quite known right it already had outstanding track record when it came to like epc projects right so i don't see i i i think you are quoting it can be or that time it was a challenge to convince people that you guys can get into it but i feel that it was already there because you guys had a great track record but what i feel what challenge and you can correct me if i am wrong the challenge what i see in your vision that time you would have faced was you were redefining luxury you were redefining the 
need which other developers wouldn't have thought ki this is what home buyer could you know aspire for or want like even if you're keeping in mind a gujarati family having a bigger living room because they come together these are things nitty gritty that time no one thought they wanted ki unit khada kar diya hai bechna hai bas khatam but you are redefining uh, not just the luxury in terms of space but also bringing amenities did you face challenge with the existing players in that market so there was a lot of dirty marketing which was happening against us it's a open market you have to be competitive and open we did not expect this but yes, there was a lot of dirty marketing try uh, you know trying to project us that as a non developer mm. a fresher in the market but uh you know these things we avoided because we completely focused on two aspects one is you keep on constructing yeah and what differentiated us was because we had enough surplus liquidity mm. and historically until date we are debt free mm. we had enough bank balance and cash flows to support and sustain the construction even if we were not selling mm which was not the case we were very healthily sold out but even if we wouldn't have been sold out mm. the construction would have been going on non stop mm. which again is a market booster for people and developers have now realized that yeah. the key is not marketing the key is construction and quality mm. Mm. which we've been focusing since past 10 years now right but uh, great you uh, you know quoted marketing because in mumbai i think especially i've seen a marketing going in a different level altogether when you notice uh, like campaign names like santa cruz 2.0 when you see uh, campaigns like code name this so and i have seen one of your interview where you have said there are two kind of developers one is about the marketing and one is about the delivery if someone wants to check the track record rather than seeing what is coming in times of india front page they should check the track record but saying that don't you think marketing projects in certain way also attract home buyers it might even aspire them like i i don't want to quote certain branded developers but the way they market or the way they bring out videos even when the site is not ready but giving that kind of aspirational video and making a home buyer you know i think track record theek hai but something great can come up even though they have not seen anything even like example even what why what i'm noticing in land plot developments there's nothing been built but the kind of videos that are coming out making everyone excited or even put a uh, you know a uh, token money so do you think the marketing actually plays a huge role when it comes to launching of project or when it comes to attracting certain home buyers one thing which i'm very happy about is that rera has come in mm so for players like us who does not believe much in marketing and still have been able to sell versus the players who have always just believed in marketing mm. rather than having a good quality track record and all and misleading the buyers actually so when you gave me an examples of uh, videos yeah the the land is vacant there is extraordinary videos fancy models film stars actors been projected on the billboards yeah yeah uh, i never believed in those things yes mm. marketing does play a very important role in creating a perception but mm. home buyers are now very smart and for the fact we are very happy that people are now um, more engaged more uh, knowledgeable and has key information regarding these things because what happens is say for example you have to sell this cup it's not even visualized or you don't have the visualization power mm. it will help you the marketing will help you in visualizing this would be the cup which would look good on your table mm. or which would look good with your other crockery set mm. so marketing micl has personally believed mm. to only be used till that extent where a person's visualization power for a layman which is slightly lesser compared to a developer who's you know um, constructing it or building it Mm. it helps you over there in creating a perception that yes this is luxury this is uber luxury it would have oceanic views for example or it would have forest views mm. depending on the project to project so we have always used marketing to create perceptions but which is realistic yeah. santa cruz 2.0 and uh, you know like new cuff parades of the world 
I really don't feel you should be that uh, or upper jo mm. bkc nx mm. i feel that is too wannabe mm. for a reason that you are if you are not confident on the location yourself mm. why did you take the project in the first place mm. some people are calling it uh, upper jo mm. what do you mean by upper jo who defined upper jo mm. who created upper jo there is nothing like this existing Hmm. you are just misleading a buyer in convincing and pampering the ego hmm. that yes i am part of jo it may be upper jo lower jo etc yeah. yeah but if you are not confident hmm. why mislead and yes these tactics used to work in the past hmm. now they don't and we are very happy that we have never done these kind of things where we call it 2.0 where we are changing the perception we are doing this mm. we have always stick to what exactly that is mm. like if you are we are building a lot of things in ghatkopar yeah now what we did is we created something called as ghatkopar avenue which is the name of my society mm. where we took up 17 buildings and revamped the entire area if you are doing that you can probably call it something but i would not like to call it new alta mount road Hmm. Yeah. Gad Cooper is the crux. Why shy out of it? And if you're feeling so shy about it, why hmm. construct in that place? Hmm. So I don't believe in misleading marketing tactics. Hmm. Using fancy film stars. Yes, they are there for a reason. But say, for example, you're using Ashwarya Rai Bachchan on to a billboard. Hmm. Is she going to come and stay next to you? Yeah. Is she part of that? Hmm. Is Sri Amita Bachchan going to be part of that society? Hmm. They are not, right? What are you trying to show the home buyers? Hmm. But you know, um, as you quoted, like how we are seeing even developers uh, engaging with brand ambassadors and celebrities. I think we are in the culture where more of uh, talks are happening, but because when certain announcement of these brand ambassadors happen, I mean certain announcement of these new post code or names happen there's a lot of engagement in twitter so i remember when uh, code name or santa cruz 2.0 all of these were happening in a parallel manner a lot of tweets started like people start they were trolls they were even finding or even uh, you know uh, giving that a clothes to the marketing people and all but the engagement made the brand name i would say visible right i agree to that where yeah. see these code names uh and all are specifically used for one simple reason the same project cannot be launched multiple times because the engagement reduces over time true like yeah. if i give you my one project and you've already visited mm. how will i make you come back again at that set so yeah. these are the new tactics in marketing which are used especially for the broker and channel partner community yeah because nowadays the competition is so much that lot of brokers mm. they find it very difficult to attract customer at the same location which already they visited so what they come up with so we are launching uh code name xyz mm. and okay what happens then indirectly still you are still misleading the customer mm. why because what you are telling now is sir we have got something new for you now what is that something new so i have i had visited few developers sales offices mm. and what something new they have changed the wall switches or they've changed the tiling pattern or they've just launched uh, an apartment mm. where they're giving modular kitchen or acs in the room yeah this is code name so just for an ac or a modular kitchen yes you will gain engagement yeah twitter instagram lot of these channel partners will utilize these code names mm. to promote and get customers but i still feel it is still misleading mm. and till date again like we have not done any code names and not because i don't do it it's wrong what i feel is if you have built something mm. for example an apple if apple is launching an iphone every year does it shy away from apple it does yeah, not it doesn't yeah right it might give xyz features new every year but the whole crux you take time money cross has been spent Mm. in curating that product and again and again you're trying to mislead a customer just because he walks back again to the site 
why not offer some better amenities why not offer some better finishes in the apartment why not offer something mm. where you don't have to do these misleading tactics and indirectly again not be transparent and honest towards the buyers so i have noticed as you quoted in the micl projects you haven't marketed or you haven't misle- mislead the customers in certain you know tactics and all so i understand you're building a legacy you want to be known for the kind of quality work you're, pro- you're providing to home buyers the kind of transparency you're providing so under your leadership where do you envision micl heading in 5 years especially in this real estate vertical we have also been doing marketing i wouldn't shy away or deny that we have not done marketing but we don't shy away from the crux of marketing hmm. if this is the project and this is the location we will never lie about the location neither we will lie about the project yes we do offer a lot of new things like if diwali comes in yeah. we've got something called a, of uh, our campaign called as shubharam hmm so shubharam is micl's home buying festival hmm where you get multiple offers in terms of uh, you know better payment plans or uh, better inventory which was not available earlier hmm uh, faster uh, processes in terms of selections uh, the brokers get a better offering in terms of their percentage hmm. so we do these kind of things but we don't shy away from the project crux which is the name the location yeah. and the identity of it and uh, talking about uh, where do we see micl see i am not honestly in the race to run a factory hmm how lot of other people have got the ambition of hmm. i am here to provide extraordinary quality construction extraordinary lifestyle where i can be a part of their daily lives hmm i want to create a legacy and a vertical where people cherish living in an micl house hmm because they've got taken care of right from the entrance lobby to their bedroom space i want to be part of all of these spaces to bless us all our life and we would definitely be in the top league hmm without even owning probably a single square foot of land like so your tagline says live better tell us more about this tagline is it uh, aligned to of course you have been quite strong when it comes to the values and transparency so why live better what is it aligned with your certain values so when i was asked a question mm. micl first never had a tagline couple of years back i thought of that we should definitely have a tagline so the first tagline which resembled us and our identity was the real in reality mm. so what do i mean by that is there are a lot of reality players but asli hum hai hmm because we know how to construct yeah we know how to nurture we know how to plan and we know the nitty gritty what getting involved in terms of licensing architecture hmm. finishing hmm lot of other players just got money and become a developer without having any expertise or background hmm and these are the actual players who spoil the industry hmm spoil the title of a developer hmm post that couple of years we already established ourselves where we were growing lot of projects coming up right from ghatkopar to vikroli mulund dai sir vile parle jo mm. and we were growing at a very steady pace and one fine day i was asked a question again um that what's next that's when i thought like you know we've been playing an integral role especially whichever buildings we are developing that we are always helping you live better hmm and this was the exact statement which i said and that's what struck me like i think what we are doing let's keep it simple and short have our own identity like live better yeah. now what do i mean by live better hmm again the whole philosophy of innovation comes in hmm i always believe that more than it a developer has to be innovative yeah because if you are not ahead of the market trends mm. people will not come to you yes and i am not much of a marketing person so whatever we built till date we had never got any hoardings we had never done any newspaper ads we just started recently mm. because one of the projects which was one of the tallest in the country required that kind of a magnitude yeah for people to see people to be aware of otherwise any of my other projects we've never done these kind of things so what happens in live better is we curate the spaces 
सो आई विल गिव एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ माई दहीसर प्रोजेक्ट इन मेरा बाइंदर फाइव ईयर्स बैक वेन वी लॉन्च फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम वी केम अप विद फिलोसफी ऑफ आराध्य हाई पार्क विच हैज सिक्स बिल्डिंग्स पोडियम लैंडस्केप नाउ दैट साइड every project was 10 acres 15 acres of my competitors everybody was doing gyms yeah and basic gardens and stuff mm-hmm. so i sat down sat down with my team what is it that we are doing different mm-hmm. so they said so we are doing gym we are doing garden i'm like the whole world is doing that mm-hmm. so then i started getting into the integration part of it mm-hmm. and i realized that these buyers are a typical average buyer where apartment starts nearly around 50 lakh rupees and it goes up to getting one and a half two crore rupees mm. now these are the actual set of home buyers who have always deployed like i said their entire wealth savings to buy a house yeah plus they definitely have some mortgages which they're paying lifelong yeah you know unfortunately that's the situation but they are not getting the right livable space which they should inside the house now what do i mean by livable space mm. when you curating a bedroom you need to have side tables on both side husband wife both are sleeping yeah you also have a mobile phone probably your husband also has a mobile phone mm. and in the night you're checking probably emails planning your calendar for the next day and you mm. put your phone for charge this is a typical style of 99% people all over the world you mm. put your phone for the charge at night full night the charging and you sleep mm. right these houses when i visited the other apartments only one side table could be fitted in the bedroom that means either the husband is supposed to use the mobile phone or the wife yeah or one partner is supposed to use and the other one is supposed to give the phone mm. you want to sleep till late morning your husband has to leave for office his alarm will trigger you as well mm. smallest things yeah right we introduced space planning where comfortably side tables could be fitted mm. at the same time we introduce walk in wardrobe spaces in one bhk Again, okay. people were thinking that one BHK person, why do they need a walk-in wardrobe? Mm. They're humans. Everybody has got a lifestyle. Everybody dreams of buying fancy clothes, shoes, True. bags, etc. of the world. Why not? Mm. I give them walk-in wardrobe, dedicated spaces, over and above by creating a beautiful niche mm. in the bedroom, so that the wardrobe does not protrude out in the bedroom. So the wardrobe had a dedicated space where it would completely fit a nice mm. space for two people mm. and over and above this the other addition which we did was we introduced a dry balcony in the kitchen mm. which fitted a washing machine a dryer and during monsoon you can dry the clothes up with a mm. fan on top of it and added a balcony mm. stereotypically the world was making a 350 carpet to i think around 400 carpet area of uh, 1 bhk yeah we made 500 carpet of one bhk and trust me we were sold out on the first day because people were thinking why do they need these spaces i thought why should they not deserve these spaces sure and we gave them these spaces and people were very happy with it we were sold out and i'm very proud to also say that we are the most expensive in the market mm. and we are sold out still people are still struggling by these code names by these other marketing tactics unable to sell and with our principles values of mm. transparency and innovation being the most expensive in the, in the market people mm. don't mind uh, paying the premium for it yeah. and we are sold out so these kind of smaller smaller innovations mm. means live better one more other thing which we did was i did a survey with a lot of people so i used to be hands on with the customers when we started uh, we were about to start sales in fact and i met a lot of brokers Mm. actual customers that what is it that you desire and what is it your daily lifestyle so typical job back home mm. spending time with the kids there were two things which i observed that they don't have much travel plan of the world yeah which the rich riches of the world have that okay i'm going to be traveling to milan i'm going to be traveling to paris mm. i want to buy this gucci bag from you mm. know from the store in paris or etc places of the world mm. these guys have very small dreams and they've probably not experienced these things across mm. the globe so what i did is i gave them the feeling of a resort mm. and a cruise combined together on their podium now what do i mean by that is 
we created India's first swimming pool theatre. Now, when I mentioned the swimming pool theatre, people went bonkers. Of what does it mean first? Mm. So, swimming pool theatre is a beautiful large screen yeah. attached to your swimming pool. Why? Because when I asked people, do you go for a swim? Mm. 99% said we don't have a swimming pool. Mm. The 1% who desired or who has a swimming pool, they said, okay, it's in a space. Kabhi kabhi hum paani nahi bharte usme. Maintenance aisa hota hai. Main swimmer nahi ho. Mera bachcha kabhi kabhi jata hai. So I gave people that me and family time. Mm. You, are in, you are interested in enjoying a cricket match. Mm. And your child is free at that same time after school. Mm. And that's when the World Cup is going on. Yeah. I have given you both the experiences. You are watching your World Cup. Mm. You are teaching your child to swim. Mm. Everybody is having a gala time. In fact, you are calling your friends and family to mm. come and just enjoy a swim with you in that pool. Mm. Because it's designed in a particular fashion where it's not just for swimmers. Mm. Any amenity which is designed where it serves purpose for multiple people, you know, it is often maintained more. True. So this yeah. swimming pool was designed for people who just wants to sit outside, not even get wet, mm. and read a book. We gave them cabanas. Nice. Okay. We gave people a separate space for their kids, mm. not just a small swimming pool, but we added slides and swings in the pool, mm. which made it like a resort. So when you go to a resort, you you know you see these water slides and stuff. We mm. gave these things. Over and above this, we created a large 30,000 square feet almost mm. of a garden space in the center of their podium where you can do your picnics, you can do your yoga, you can do your outing, uh, play probably a small football uh, with your smaller kids and all. Mm. These things, when people started seeing it, mm. they started appreciating it a lot because they've never got these things. Yeah. And that's why the philosophy started becoming more and more hardcore of live better. That if you are living in an MICL house, mm. you are always going to be living better than your friends and family who are not living in an MICL house. Also, it's quite thoughtful that you go in that depth or in that understanding of the customer, even if they would not know you are providing them that kind of, I would say, amenities or even that luxury that they wouldn't have thought of. And that's how even MICL, I think, would be remembered. That where you quote it very clearly that you are going to live better compared to your peers. But why go to that extent? Why you want to go in every project? I get it. And it's a lovely way to say that we are not going to have a factory kind of, you know, output happening. Every time Kupsai projects launch. Kato. But going with each project in such detailed manner, why go to that extent? See, my family is personally into a lot of philanthropy also. Mm. We've not spoken this out uh, in public, but um, I don't mind sharing it today on this platform that my family donates 35% of their wealth every year for charity. Nice. And this is unannounced charity. So we do not uh, have our names coming in outside any sanstas mm. or we don't do these things. We are very yeah. silent. We do it in every sector, right from education to hunger to hospitals, uh, mm. schools. We donate everywhere. And one thing which I've always learned is if you do something which will impact the person's life, that yeah. person is your fan lifelong. You don't have to sell him anything. He will be your reseller lifelong. Sure. So if I'm doing something good for you and if I have uh, made even a smallest change or impact in your life, you will never forget me. And I don't want people to forget. Me. And that's a lovely way to put because as you would know, Everyone knows Hiran Andani because he defined the PIN code. He defined what Pawai could be, right? And even now, home buyers are all being talking about it. And maximum of their projects are being sold because the word of mouth. And this is where I see MICL also growing because the kind of quality and the kind of thoughtful, I would say, everything is going in the project from the beginning till end. Because as a managing director yourself, you don't have to get involved, right? But you are getting involved, making sure that even though these projects, your team could take care, but you are personally getting involved because the name in the end, as you said, people would remember. People would remember what this person or this builder did provide us this and the word carries. And of course, it creates that kind of huge legacy. That's how it's built. 
but saying that it sounds i'm sure it's going to go more further for you in in a bigger way but there can be challenges right when you're existing in a market like mmr where now we are seeing of course the lands are now less redevelopment are happening even you are active in redevelopment how do you convince when you take those private uh, you know uh, societies and all how you can convince them to see this kind of aspirational life because a person whom you might be approaching in redevelopment might might be 1000 or 1500 square feet for them to in in certain locations if you see bandra and all for them it's like ki mujhe bada ghar mil jaye that's fine amenities ka kya karna hai like that kind of perception because uh, another buyer who would be maybe from mulan they would be like high amenities hey, amenity family too. and all but when you go towards this kind I of location i just recently met somebody Achha. okay and uh, we have just recently launched our one of the tallest tower of the country called aradhya avan yeah now if you see that tower that's the highest loaded amenity tower uh probably in entire south of mumbai it has more than i think 50 plus amenities and right from a bowling alley mm. to a turkish hammam bath to a private theater to a restaurant in the sky everything is part of that scheme and uh, one person came in he's actually already my customer mm. and we met at uh, one social gathering and he told me like uh, but do everybody use uh, this amenities is it of that importance Mm. what i told him is today if you want to buy a membership of golf club yeah or if you want to buy a membership of cci mca or any of these things one thing they're very old mm they've been designed by britishers ideally yeah. the majority of the golf clubs of the world and you're still paying a hefty premium and there's a 10 year 20 year waiting list yeah that's what i was going to say right yeah. you don't get memberships mm. even if you do you are still using that 100 year old historically thought process driven thing just mm. because the rest of the world is i am giving you your private space mm. limited exclusively for you nobody else can even use it which is going to create the differentiator mm. and which is going to create wealth for you so what's very much important for a person to understand is everybody carries pin code mm. you are staying at juhu you are staying at south mumbai everybody carries pin code but it's the differentiator aspect which creates wealth for people and because you're trying to create an estate mm. you're trying to create a legacy for your future generations as well yeah you might not be using it i might not be using it but the future generation is looking at immediate go to things mm. and the biggest example in the world which everybody saw is covid yeah. when covid struck my these complexes and amenities which we have done were people were so happy mm. and literally we had received phone calls from people that we thank you and we bless you that even in a stand alone building you had designed gardens for us you had mm. designed gyms for us which kept us healthy and engaged where we did not want to break the curfew get out of the building and literally you know like pull our hair out mm. during that 3 4 months where there was a complete curfew lockdown yeah and these are the buildings today mm. factually also which are the most expensive in the market if you go to resell your house so what's more important for you is the money that you're putting in mm. it's not just to stay okay i got a bigger house yeah it's how will you be a market leader mm. even after me delivering the house that if you want to claim that you're using the best of the world mm. or you are in the top compared to your local competition in the market not just by the size of the house mm. but even by the entire touch and feel the elevation is also very important aspect true and what things you are getting immediately mm. and i have seen today 90% of the young generation the men and women both are working women are succeeding very well mm. uh, and you know there were times earlier when people used to think that women are only meant to do household chores mm-hmm. now women are market leaders they are probably even much more ahead than men which is a very good fact so which shows that the kids who have to be taken care of earlier by one partner yeah both are working partners so what is going to happen is if you want to take your kid for a jog for a swim are you going to take these people always to a gym khana which shuts at 7 or 8 in the evening yeah. but you have your private swimming pool 
you and your wife got free after work both want to enjoy a quality time with your kids your swimming pool is open 24 hours you can use it whenever you want to 